Many of us have heard of the Nobel Prizes, right? They are announced every year. There is a lot of attention and excitement surrounding them. And you would may have remembered. You can go back and check it out. But in two thousand twenty, the Nobel Prize was awarded for a particular technology to these two women scientists. Not us. I mean, not us yet. But you never know. <laughs> so Emmanuel Charpentier and Jennifer Doudna, and I believe one is French and one is American. They won it jointly because they worked on a particular technology called CRISPR Cas9. It's a very crisp topic. Agreed, very crisp topic, Raghav. And we'll talk about how crisp it is. It's crisp enough that it can actually edit your DNA. It can go, you know, it can get that that deep. This is really deep tech. Okay, this is the edge of tech. So they so they shared the Nobel Prize in 2020, but actually work on CRISPR had been going on for many years before that. So let's see where all of this started. And let's begin right at the beginning, and Sneha will take us through the structure of DNA and RNA. Yes, since you've been attending Doctor Scientist before, we've definitely talked about DNA. Okay, but what is the DNA? Has anybody heard of DNA before? Yes, I think they should have. They should have. Come where, on, guys. Where is this DNA, guys? Where is this found? Genes, yes. Genes that make us up is part of your DNA. Absolutely. Yes, so that means DNA is everywhere. It's in us. It's in all animals, all plants, all organisms. Absolutely everything, right? So what does it look like? So DNA looks like a double helix. Okay. So what does that mean? It means it has two strands and they're interwound around each other. Um, and that's what gives us this helix-like shape, right? Um, and even though all of us look so different, even though our DNA is what gives us all of our features. um and makes us who we are dna is only made from four bases that's it just four bases make up this huge molecule of dna that we have inside us and just four bases code for all this information that makes us us and makes plants plants makes an an animal an animal right all of that in just four bases okay so these four bases are short for in short called a t g and c these are the first four letters of each of the types of molecules that they are okay and can you notice something in the dna so i want you to look closely at the dna image and tell me what do you see in the pairing okay so you see there are two things that pair with each other one from each strand so can you tell me what is the g pairing with and what is the a pairing with right Yes, G and C and A and T, right? So if you look at the DNA, everywhere A is paired with T and G is paired with C. So this is how they pair, just because of their structure of their molecules, right? Of these specific molecules. So that is DNA. Now RNA is a completely different molecule, uh, but it still has some of the same bases, right? It has the C, it has the G, it has the A, but it does not have the T. So in place of T, it has a separate chemical molecule which is uracil or U. Okay, and what is the biggest difference between the RNA and the DNA? What can you see? What's the biggest difference? That's a big one. Absolutely, it's right there. Very true, Adrit. For RNA, it's A U G C. But what's like this thing that's staring at your face? Yes, Kavish is right. It has one strand, one spiral-like thing, right? So the RNA molecule is a single strand. Uh, the DNA is a double strand. Okay. So this is the basics we need to know to find out what happens in CRISPR technology. Fantastic, Neil. Thank you for taking us through that. I enjoyed it as well. Okay. So this is what we were basically talking about. So if you look at the structure of DNA and RNA very closely, you can quite literally think of the DNA double helix as two like you know those candies that you chew. and that's the sugar phosphate backbone okay just some chemicals and then it's built to connect these two strands like a ladder and one is a t g c and so on is the pairing except in rna there is no t and there is u all right so what happens is um when we let me just check all right yes so during uh, our cells when they function when our cells function dna gets converted into rna in the sense converted and dna is used to make a new strand which is 
uh, of RNA. And that intermediate state is called a DNA RNA helix. Okay, so it's a hybrid, right? Do you know what a hybrid is? Do you know what a hybrid is? What is a hybrid, guys? When you say my school is going into hybrid mode, what is hybrid? Mix, exactly. So it's not two DNA, but it's not the single RNA either, but it's one DNA pairing with one RNA. This process is known as transcription. You don't have to worry about the details, but transcription is the process where DNA is used as a template to make an RNA strand. All right. Okay. So let's move further. So this okay. leads us into something which is like this universal truth, right? In biology, yes. Sneal. Okay. Yes, exactly. And which is why it's called the central dogma, right? It, it's a very important rule in biology and it's followed by all organisms um, that we know of. Okay. So now I want to think, I want you to think of a cookbook. Okay. Have all of you seen a cookbook at home? Or maybe your parents use um, like an online version of it. Has everybody seen a cookbook? Yes. I see Sounds some people nodding. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you look at a cookbook and you want to make one particular thing, you always find one recipe, right? A cookbook has multiple recipes in it. Um, but today you feel like eating cupcakes. So you find the recipe of cupcakes. Um, but is finding the recipe just enough? Is that going to give you an actual cupcake? No, you still have to make it, right? And that's sort of what this central dogma is like. So all our DNA that we have in ourselves is like this cookbook, it's like this recipe book. Um, but we need to convert it. We need to find a particular part of the DNA um, that is useful, that can perform some function. And that's the RNA, right? So the RNA is when the DNA is transcribed, it's converted into an RNA molecule. So the information from the DNA gets transferred into the RNA. And the RNA is then translated into a protein. And the protein is what actually performs a function in our body, right? Um, so for example, can, can you name a protein in our body that does a, any kind of you know, function? What are the proteins sure. you've heard of? I'm sure we can. We've named some before, right? Several. Yeah. Several. Think of a protein in your blood. Name brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Uracil is a chemical and I titan. I would love to have a protein called titan. <laughs> Keratin. Yes. Right. Hemoglobin is a great example, right? Hemoglobin is something we've all heard of and it does a very important function, which is transport oxygen throughout our blood, right? Um, and it can do that only in the protein form. So the DNA or the gene that codes for hemoglobin cannot perform this function. It just has the information, but it can't actually do the function. Okay. So that's the difference between these three kinds of molecules. Okay. So this is the central dogma, right? Snehal in biology. It's like this universal truth that DNA makes RNA, RNA makes protein. There are some exceptions to this, but there are exceptions. But nevertheless, large part of the truth is that uh, the flow of genetic information is DNA to RNA, RNA to protein. All right. So everyone good with that? Okay. So if you think about, um, you know, your body, if you think about what your body is, basically you're, we are a bunch of cells, like a huge bag, but structured bag of cells. Our cells contain chromosomes. Can you think of how many chromosomes do we have in our cells? How many chromosomes do we have? Can anyone come up with the answer? Think and come up with the answer. Very good, Kavish. So 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each of these chromosomes basically consists of highly coiled DNA. All right. And we know what DNA consists of. All right. So this is just to tell you that basically all of this DNA is in our cell. And the DNA makes, makes up our genome, all right? So it's our genome that eventually encodes for the proteins that we are going to need in order to function. So any questions so far? Are you getting the picture? So we started with DNA structure. The DNA makes RNA, RNA makes protein. All of this DNA is in chromosomes. Chromosomes are in cells. And the DNA together constitutes our human genome, all right? So this is your genome, my genome, and it's all unique, okay? Any questions on this? So if somebody asks you how, I mean, if you ever are worried about how unique you are, just remember it's in your genome. <laughs> you can tell yourself that, right? How many total DNA strands? So they say if you stretch DNA from every cell out, like stretch it, make it a, like a rope, you can climb to the moon. If you could do that, you could use your DNA like a ladder to the moon. So it's not like total DNA strands, but 
it's pairs of chromosomes rather and dna is all this condensed chromosomes okay, okay. so namrata has a question namrata asks how much of dna how much or how many dna molecules are in a chromosome a chromosome is one big dna molecule that is coiled up okay so chromosome Correct. is actually just a dna molecule okay uh, i think renu has joined us so renu can you hear us maybe we'll just quickly check no i don't think so snail all right we can start playing the video then snail okay guys so let's look at what your genome sequence is in a bit and then we are going to get to the exciting part of actually editing our genome sequence which is super intense okay one minute can i play this i think it should play but i don't i don't think we can hear the sound yeah can, can you hear uh no so i think you'll have to um share sound as well when you share the I... screen okay let me just stop share for a minute uh share screen and share sound as well okay i think i got that now right sneha good yes i think now if you play it we should be able to so sure. uh no we still can't hear the we still can't hear the sound it's interesting how snail because now i have shared okay let me just yeah. try this one more time and then we can just move on no snail it's creating some issues at my end it's fine it's fine i think okay we can probably just move on to the next one okay yeah. so i think we ended with um, let's go to slide show here the slides will be up guys so you can take a look at the uh, video there so okay we basically said all of this makes up our genome okay and we were going to get into details of our genome which you can now do on your own all right okay snail you want to go ahead yes, yes. okay all right so before we go ahead with what is crispr uh, and what does all of this do exactly uh, we are just going to go through some interesting terms you must have heard of okay uh, so has anybody heard of a palindrome yes can anybody tell us what is a palindrome actually snail recently we had something called palindrome and audiogram or something not audiogram ambigram i'm so sorry but i think we all heard of it recently yes guys what's a palindrome yes, yes namrata yes everybody says yes they heard of it yes so something that reads the same whether you read it the going left to right or right to left right so something that reads the same backwards okay and this is a really good example on this screen okay so what does what does this word read from left to right what does it read um, it doesn't make yeah. sense but it's fine <laughs> yes right okay and if you were to reverse it if you were to read it from the other end it would it still reads the same okay so that's what a palindrome is okay so now next we're going to see what is an acronym so what does an acronym mean can anybody tell us what is an acronym a short yeah something that's short not opposite um something that's short right a short form for something So, what's an acronym that you guys use in your life? What's an acronym you use in your life? TTS, yes. WHO is an acronym, yes. LOL is an acronym, yes. What else? What else do we know? Okay, so lots of acronyms that you've heard of. Okay. so crispr the word crispr is actually an acronym 
Okay. Oh, okay. So, is it? Is it Sneha? Yes. So we have acronyms in science too, huh? Thank you so much for coming for me. Uh, I hope you guys learned about DNA and RNA. How does the DNA structure looks like? And today we'll be discussing about CRISPR. So, like Snehal was telling you, that uh, CRISPR is basically uh, an acronym. An acronym is basically just a short form. Like we uh, just seen that LOL is an acronym. Similarly, CRISPR is an acronym. It means that CRIS CRISPR stands for something, right? CRISPR stands for clustered, regularly interspaced, short palindromic repeats. Quite a mouthful, right? We don't have to remember all this. We have to just remember one thing in our mind that. It is a palindromic repeat, and I am sure that uh, uh, you guys learnt about palindromic repeats as well. So palindrome is something which is read uh, the same left to right and right to left. Okay, so, such as taco cat, which you have seen in the previous slides. So this is a structure. This is what I am showing you here is a CRISPR DNA. It is a double helical strand, and we have learned that. Uh, A always binds with T and G always binds with C. They are like close friends, right? So if you see closely, these re red and blue patches here, they are basically palindromic repeats. What I mean by that, A G C T. Uh, if you read from left to right, A G C T, and if you read from right to left, it is again A G C T on the other strand. It means it is a palindrome. And what is more interesting here is. uh these palindromes are repeated many times see this uh this section is repeated 1 2 3 4 4 times repeated and in between we have this different color dna dna parts right so this is what a crispr looks like okay shall i move to the next slide yeah so we'll learn about crispr dna with an example yeah So here you see this girl, uh, the brown hair girl. If you clearly, uh, you know, focus on this girl, you can see that this girl is repeated. This is quite funny that uh, it's same and it is repeated nine times. So we can say this basically represent a CRISPR DNA. This girl is repeated nine times, and even if you uh, look from left to right it's the same girl and right to left also it's the same girl and in between we have this a different looking guy with a short hair and then uh, after these three girls again we have this different looking girl which are with uh, with a black hair so this basically represent how a crispr dna looks like repeats and then unique sequence like this guy and then repeat then again unique sequence and then again repeats right so uh, moving to next slide okay so did you know that some viruses also attack bacteria do you know this guy this guy is sars cov2 this one caused uh, covid 19 right and it's a virus that infects human beings and animals similarly viruses also infect bacteria so here if you see in this diagram i'm showing you how this is a bacteria sorry virus which we call bacteriophage okay very uh, big name for the heart so viruses can also infect bacteria did you know that and uh, why are we discussing about these things if you go back to the previous slide i was talking about how there were unique different uh, sequences in between those repeats similarly what scientists found uh, that these viruses were infecting the bacteria and bacteria is also very smart what bacteria was doing bacteria was cutting the dna of the virus and keeping it with itself and why is it doing it i'll tell you a little later so here you see these sequences they are coming from the virus they are dna that are cut from the virus and kept uh, along with the dna of the bacteria this is a basic crispr right so moving to the next slide Uh, okay i think renu let's just stop here and make sure yeah. this concept is understood yes. because yeah, it's a yeah, little yeah. complicated there are many yes. players now there is yes, the bacteria yes. there is the virus yes. or the bacteriophage and then there is the technique that the bacteria uses to to cut the viral, the viral. dna which is or a viral dna which is crispr right yes. am i correct okay yes. any questions guys any questions
Okay, so maybe we can do this with a little quiz just to make sure everyone has understood yeah. the concept. Okay, so what is the genetic material in bacteria? Is it DNA? Is it RNA? What is the genetic material we are talking about here? Very good, Kavish. Very good, Namrata. Okay, what is the what is attacking the bacteria? Is it another bacteria? Is it a fungus? What is it that is attacking the bacteria? Okay, very oh, good, nice. Avisha Adri. Lots of what is this virus called? Okay, very good, very good. They've already okay, started but, guessing the question. Yeah. Okay, now what is cutting what's DNA? Is the bacteria cutting the viral DNA or the virus cutting the bacterial DNA? So, first one, what is cutting, and second one, what you put it in that order. So, bacteriophage is the virus, and bacteria is whatever it is exists. Very good. So, bacteria yes. is cutting the viral DNA, and what is CRISPR then? What is CRISPR in all of this? Okay, cutting, something to do with cutting. It's a technique. Okay, what else? Can you just, CRISPR is what? It's the sequence of the DNA. Okay, it's that acronym for the clustered repeats. So CRISPR is the, yes, it's a technique. Or I, it's or the section the, of the DNA that in the bacteria, right? So the bacteria is cutting parts of the viral DNA and keeping it for itself. So where is it going to keep it? It keeps it in a section of its own DNA. And this section of DNA that has all of these different um, parts of DNA that it has acquired from some other virus that was attacking it is what forms this CRISPR region, right? So the CRISPR region includes the DNA from the virus that the bacteria cut and kept for itself. Okay, so CRISPR is a region in the bacteria, right? Yes. Okay, we can move on. So I'm making sure even I've understood. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it looks like everybody understood what CRISPR is and you guys are becoming an expert on CRISPR now. Uh, so like uh, we all have immune system, right? We get infections and our body has immune cells that fight the infection. Similarly, if a bacteria is getting infected by the virus, bacteria has to fight back, right? And how it fight back? It uses CRISPR to fight back. So bacteria also has a DNA, like we learned about DNA. What is DNA? So what happens when the virus infects the bacteria? It cuts the virus and keep it within its own DNA. That is, we know as CRISPR, right? So what scientists found, uh, you know, in early 90s, that these unique sequences, these are yellow sequences are repeats, which are being repeated many times. And then in between, we have these colorful, unique sequences. And when we match these sequence, it is not the sequence of the bacteria, the bacterial DNA. So it was coming from somewhere else. And we realized it was coming from viruses in these bacteriophage, which was infecting the bacteria. If you see clear, uh, like very closely, the purple one matches the DNA of the bacteriophage. And this green one also matches the DNA that is present in the bacteriophage. So we quickly realized what bacteria uh, was doing, cutting the DNA and keeping it with itself. It's almost like taking muck shots and keeping it. Why is it doing it? Because the next time when the same virus will infect, the bacteria has the snapshots. See, this is the virus. I This is the virus that infected me last time because I have the DNA of that virus and I need to fight back and, you know, cut the DNA again. So how it happens, we'll learn about CRISPR in the next slide. How is it happening? That's a very nice analogy, Renu, that CRISPR is like a mugshot. Basically, yeah. if somebody is entering your house, yeah. the first thing you'll do is take a picture. Like, I have to yeah. tell somebody or I have to remember yeah. that this guy. So yeah. it's kind of like that. That's a really nice analogy. So uh, now I'll tell you about how the infection happens. So uh, first time when this bacteriophage, the purple guy here, when it infects the bacteria, what happens? It gives inside, it gives its DNA inside the bacteria because what viruses want to do, they are very smart. They want to enter into a bacteria and multiply and grow. Like, you know, just take, uh, take everything from the bacteria and try to grow inside the bacteria and make more number of uh, viruses and infect more cells. So this is how the uh, viruses work. And bacteria also has bacterial DNA, right? That makes bacteria the bacteria, right? So what happens this time bacteria will do, it will cut some of these sequences. Here I'm showing you this uh, guys with, uh, you know, uh, swords in their hands, they are like almost, these are like two armies, viral army and bacterial army. So what they will do, they will keep capture these four guys from coming from viral uh, DNA. And in the next step, 
can we yeah in the next step what will happen they are keeping these guys with themselves right remembering these purple guys which are coming from viral dna and in the next round the next slide what will happen imagine the same virus is infecting the bacteria because this guy purple guy wants to infect the bacteria and you know grow inside it so second time infection it is again uh, inserting its dna putting its dna inside the bacteria and now the uh, the bacteria is very smart it remembers these purple guys it knows that it is coming from this virus right so what will happen uh, now as we learned in the previous slide the dna gets copied into rna right so as we knew that these are dna and dna se uh, segments are now being transcribed or copied into rna these guys here purple ones are now rna rna sequence and crispr is very unique in sense that uh, we have this rna sequence and also we have a protein a protein called cas9 cas9 you can imagine as a scissor right If there is a scissor it's a very big molecular scissor which only has one job to do cut right so you have the uh, mrna sequence and as we learned in the previous slides that there is a complementarity uh, a always bind with t and g always bind with c so this mrna also has a sequence right it finds the sequence in this viral dna and it matches with it a matches with t g matches with t uh, g Uh, C, sorry, and then CRISPR Cas9, the Cas9, which is a scissor here. If you can see the scissor, it goes and cut the viral DNA. And what will happen if the viral DNA is cut? Now the DNA is broken, and it is no longer to, you know, uh, again make copies or infect the bacteria, right? So here I am showing you the complementary uh, uh, DNA and RNA binding. Imagine this is a, a, a DNA of a virus, and these three one, these three guys are RNA. but complementary to this particular sequence here okay and it binds and now the cas9 can cut the dna wherever it binds so wherever they uh, these two strand matches the cas9 cuts and cas9 you can imagine it as a big scissor which always cuts wherever there is a match right is it is it clear okay what we can do is quickly go over the slides again like a little uh, you know like a sequence so that we just walk through it so we know the players there is viral dna there is bacterial dna and then there is this crispr and cas9 so now there are four players all right in the in this game so yeah. let's start right now you can just quickly go yeah. through it again just to make sure they all understand so uh, then the uh, the bacterial phage infects the uh, bacteria right it inserts its viral dna the viral dna i'm showing you as purple color and the yellow color is a bacterial dna now there are two armies these two different dnas i'm calling them armies right and uh, what the bacteria is doing it is cutting some of these uh, letters a t g c these guys are a t g c you can imagine and keeping it in its own genome in its mm. uh, own sequence you know so that it can remember it the next time the same virus or you know same family virus infects again so now you can see there are yellow and purple guys It means uh, bacterial DNA as well as viral DNA, some letters of viral DNA. And what will happen during the second round of infection? Again, the same sequence will come. But now I have taken uh, in the last round, the bacteria has taken these four guys, and these four guys will be copied. Means the DNA will be copied uh, into the exact match into RNA. And RNA is a close cousin of DNA, right? So now we'll have RNA. These three guys you can see here. So they matches. With the DNA here, because what we need is complementarity. Means A always binds with T, e and G always binds with C. Imagine they were A T G C. So A T G will always bind to T, uh, T A and C, right? So and now they always uh, go with something called a CRISPR Cas9. Cas9 is a scissor. It's a scissor, right? So they always go with a scissor. They bind almost like holding hands. they hold hand they shake hands and wherever they shake hands the crispr cas9 cuts the dna and now the viral dna is cut okay so, so basically longer. it's an rna protein complex that okay. cuts the viral dna so yeah. now that whole central dogma is coming back right the why we started with all those basics okay all right we can move on then so let's any questions any yeah. questions uh i don't see any questions for now 
uh, I think maybe you can doubt. Okay, Parthiv says he has a question. Uh, Parthiv, would you like to type your question in? We are waiting for him. Okay. <laughs> Very nice question. Uh, Quite like the police. Correct. Quite like okay. the police. Kavish has a question. Kavish says, does Cas9 also have bacterial DNA in it? So Cas9 is a protein. It's not a DNA. It's just a protein, which is a scissor. Okay. It's not DNA. It's not RNA. It only, it's only a protein, which cuts the DNA. So imagine so it, the protein has a job to cut the DNA. Yeah. But the uh, Cas9 is present in the bacterial cells. Yeah, it's present okay. in the bacterial cell. And if we and it, have seen the previous slides, Cas9 mm -hmm. is also a part of CRISPR DNA because DNA okay. gets uh, transcribed to RNA and then protein. So from but why can't Cas9, Cas9 cut bacterial DNA? Why can it only cut viral DNA? Yeah, it's a very good question. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the reason here is Cas9 is so specific. You can imagine Cas9 as being uh, so smart that it only detects a particular sequence. Hmm. So it doesn't really cut anywhere. It needs a particular sequence, which we call as PAM sequence. So okay. I don't want to get into technicalities of, you know, PAM sequence and how Cas9, you can imagine Cas9 being very specific to only cut the invader uh, DNA, which okay. has that particular okay. sequence. That particular sequence could be imagined like as a batch. So whichever okay. has that batch, it will cut there and not anywhere else, not anywhere else in the bacterial DNA. So it's very specific. Very specific, okay. yeah. Not general. Okay, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So now we've come to the point where an RNA and a protein complex are, can cut the intruding viral DNA. Now let's see how we can use this for gene editing, okay? Yeah. All right. Go ahead. So uh, I'll first discuss about gene editing because we learned about uh, DNA and how a segment of DNA is a gene that makes a protein that can, you know, give you the black hair, black eyes, or what, whatever characteristics you have. The gene decides it, right? So what happens that a gene is actually a segment of DNA, a letter, and sometimes what happens, there is a change uh, somewhere in between that gene, in the letters, right? It can be miswritten, it can be removed. Suppose it was supposed to be A, T, G, C, A but then T was missing. So now it's a faulty gene, which means even this gene will not going to work properly. Whatever it was supposed to do, it is not going to do that job because there was some glitch in the sequence. Uh, like you can imagine DNA as being a language. If you miss one letter, then it will not make any sense because if from Apple you remove L, it will not read apple, right? It will read something else and it will not make sense. Similar thing can happen into in our DNA also that sometimes the letters get missed or letters are added, extra letters are added, which doesn't make sense anymore. So gene editing is basically a technology, you can say a group of technology scientists use to edit the DNA, DNA of any organism, be it uh, uh, bacteria, be it virus or, you know, plants, you can edit their DNA. And why would we like to do that? Because suppose you want to change something about somebody, right? If you want to change how tall they would grow or, you know, for plant, if you want the plant to taste something else, you just want to change their DNA that stores all the information about that plant, right? This is how we can do editing. So gene editing is a very, very important uh, technology that scientists used, uh, use all the time to change. Sometimes they remove uh, certain letters. Sometimes they add certain letters or sometimes they edit, you know, just cut some letters to uh, to do something new or to change uh, how the DNA was earlier. So CRISPR-Cas9 can also be a latest gene editing tool because one thing we realized about CRISPR is CRISPR is quite specific because Cas9 is quite smart to cut only that sequence where the, uh, where the RNA goes and binds, right? So it is very specific. When scientists uh, realize this fact that CRISPR-Cas9 can be a gene editing tool, it was a big thing. That's why the Nobel uh, Prize uh, went for CRISPR-Cas9 in 2020. So now we'll see how CRISPR can be used as a gene editing tool, right? Suppose this uh, DNA sequence here is some uh, is a sequence where I want to edit, where I want to cut it, okay? So you see, this is GTCGC. 
and on the opposite strand again it is gcga you know complementarity it is following the rule of complementarity what i have to do i have to have only two things for uh, this uh, dna to be cut one is called rna now here we call guide rna okay and if you see this sequence cag cg this matches with this cag cg it means this sequence will bind to this uh the upper uh, strand of the dna because of complementarity and then we have cas9 cas9 is a scissor again it only does one job to cut so what will happen when this whole complex is there they will go and bind to this uh, segment this guide rna goes and bind to the dna here and cas9 will cut and now you have these uh, dna strands which are cut double stranded cut uh moving to the next slide okay so basically the uh, rna protein complex can be directed to specific regions of the dna where yes. the cas9 the molecular scissor can make the cut yes. so we can specifically edit only a part of dna that we want yes. so paridhi yes. asks i don't understand why yes. we need gene editing but i think we'll come that yes we will the, into the following situations okay yeah. okay uh, so what will happen uh, one thing i would want to uh, tell here is sometimes what happens that our dna is prone to such breaks you know uh, you might have heard that uv also breaks your dna uh, it you know cuts your dna and there are some uh, harmful compounds like uh, nicotine and all they, they can have damaging effect on your dna so when the dna is cut our cells also have something called repair pathways because you can't have a cut dna hanging here and there you need to repair it right so cells are also very smart what happens when there is a double stranded break cells have two different types of repair mechanisms you can imagine first is they can join these two strands like this and uh, it is very easy you can imagine that two point ends are being joined right but what happens when sometimes they are being joined few few letters are missed because they cannot join properly so this creates a glitch now the letter has something very off in between it was supposed to be atgc but now it is supposed to, uh, now it is aagc you know extra a is added because of this joining of two ends which is which leads to mutation mutation i hope you understand there is some change some change uh, which is new uh, okay and then you have different mechanism which is called recombination will only remember a combination here what happens there is a cut in the dna here you see this cut what we can do this piece is missing because this piece was cut right this piece is lost when i had two cuts the the middle piece is lost now what i can do i can add that particular piece middle piece and join it again this is a very perfect way of joining the dna strand and it is it will lead to same uh, dna strand which was supposed to be there right so this is how a cell our cells repair a damaged dna and bacteria also have these cell uh, dna repair mechanisms so it is very cool uh, that these things can be changed also so now we'll uh, talk about how crispr cas9 can be used for a gene uh, for gene editing so one thing uh, what we would like to do imagine if you have something that can cut the dna change the dna and you know add something uh, to the letter it is very interesting right why would we like to use it we would like to use it for curing diseases there are some certain diseases uh, even in humans also which are genetic uh, suppose uh, somebody has a disease and that disease is because there was some letter that was missing in their dna right so what we would like to do we would like to use crispr cas9 to correct that a uh, glitch in the uh miswritten uh dna strand we would like to do that right so crispr cas9 can help us do those kind of um, cures for diseases and crispr can also help scientists to understand the role of few genes how will we do that if you have a dna segment and i want to know what this dna is doing what i will do i will cut that dna now dna is no longer uh, working properly right so i am not able uh, to have the protein that is supposed to be there so i will read all those um, uh, how i say that i will read that what will happen if that protein is not there you know is is the cell missing something uh, were you supposed to have a brown hair now you have uh, gray hair you know those kind of things so it also helps us to understand what is the role of that particular dna because if you remove that now you will know the importance of it right so this is how crispr can also help us in understanding the functions of different genes right
and crispr can edit genomes for different uses so what uh, is more interesting about crispr is crispr is not limited to any species you can use crispr for humans you can use crispr for plants and bacteria and viruses all you need a sequence that can match the sequence you want to edit add or you know delete right and then you have cas9 which is a molecular sequencer that these two things we need right so moving on uh, to the next slide so i'll give you one example of how crispr is helping us cure the genetic diseases so uh, do we know about this disease called sickle cell anemia no i don't think they know i think we'll have okay. to give some basics yeah so in sickle cell anemia what happens uh, we have something called red blood cells that's why our blood blood is red right our blood blood is red because we have something called red blood cells and these look like this donuts very nice fluffy donuts of red color and it is very important for us these cells are important because they what they do they transfer oxygen throughout our body so these cells are very important for us so what happens some human beings they have diseases where these cells change shape and why it happens because there is a change in the letter that makes these uh, cells right so what happens here you see sickle cell anemia uh, uh, dna it was cpc in normal human beings like us but in sickle cell uh, patients the t changes to a and when it changes to a now the mrna is also changed because you have learned that a binds with u in case of rna because there is no thymine there there is only u letter and when once there is g u g instead of j a g the shape changes because now it is a different uh, meaning right and it codes for a different uh, it makes a different type of cell which looks like almost a disc flat disc and what happens when we have these kind of cells they are not very capable of transferring oxygen they die quickly because they have such very bad shape right they are not these fluffy donuts uh, so this causes a lot of issues in uh, sickle cell anemic patients such as anemia they have very uh, low blood cells they uh, get fever they are sick all the time so very bad disease right so and we can it, imagine it's if it's a child disease. it's genetic so it's inherited and if someone is born with this we can imagine what power a tool could have if you can change this after the yeah. birth and yes. that is the power of crispr that we are coming to basically yes. something that would be written off 50 years ago because someone was born with mm. this genetic mutation making this abnormal protein that causes the red blood cells to be shaped like mm. sickles you know sickle mm. you see them on the flower, flags of pakistan and turkey and all that is the shape yeah imagine the power to change it so let's see how we can change it yeah okay so uh back then uh, there was no cure for sickle cell anemia before crispr so you can imagine how powerful crispr is in gene editing so what scientists and you know doctors are doing they are taking out the cells from the sickle cell patient this girl has sickle cell anemia you take out her cells and what you do now because we know there was only one letter change there uh, it was only uh, g a g what we do we just change that a to t that's that's what we have to do and why we do that and we uh, we use crispr for that so that we want to correct and when we have corrected this using gtg we realize the cells now have these round uh, donut like shapes uh, which is required for the red blood cells to work properly so scientists can do that using crispr so you can imagine this is such a nice technique for curing genetic diseases which have uh, changes in the dna DNA and code, they can put right? these blood cells back in the blood back. of that patient. Yes. So it's your own blood coming back. So no chance yeah. of rejection yes. or reactions. Okay, yeah. so it's done outside the patient. The cells are yes. taken in the lab, and you're editing the yes. cell in a lab. Yes, okay. and uh, blood transfusions are normal. That happens all the time. So you can, you know, give this blood back to the patient, and now the patient is happy and healthy, right? No, it has the power to do that. Wonderful. Yes. Okay. uh coming to uh uh what do we see crispr doing in the future so you just realize the power of crispr cas9 as a gene editing tool so there are endless opportunities i don't want to restrict here whatever i am showing you is only 
I think 0.1 percent what CRISPR can do, but CRISPR can do a lot many things. And I think you guys can go back and think about the possibilities of CRISPR Cas9 for a gene editing tool. So one thing I'll be discussing about the uh, the strength of CRISPR Cas9. One is it's very simple. It's so simple that uh, even anybody can do it who has basic understanding of what is wrong in the DNA, and you can simple uh, you can make your RNA. and cas9 and you can do it outside uh, the humans right you just take cells and you can do it on uh, on the plates uh, in the lab and it is easily adaptable by this i mean you can do it for fish you can do it for rice you can do it for bacteria like anything you can imagine of you can do it for different kind of organism there is no limit to it it's very accurate means crispr will not uh, cut anywhere else suppose i want to cut a gene Uh, which codes for black hair it will not go and cut the gene which will you know decide your height right it is so specific and it is quite fast that you see these results very early and then cost wise also it matters for us that it is quite cheap and it can be done in many different labs uh, with very less uh, uh, requirements okay so i'll be telling you a brief uh, um, achievements of crispr what we could achieve till now so these are the studies which i have represented as uh, nice diagrams here is you have a crispr cas9 system dna and the rna binding to that particular segment of dna and cas9 cutting it because cas9 makes double stranded cut uh, on the dna so what scientists have done at many places it was uh, it was seen that they have change the dna of mosquitoes by a we after mosquitoes because mosquitoes are vectors they uh, spread diseases like malaria okay and dengue so these are the diseases caused by uh, mosquito vectors so if we want to uh, stop the spread of such uh, deadly diseases what we would do we would change the uh, dna of these uh, mosquitoes what scientists have done they change a uh, few genes in these mosquitoes and now when mosquitoes mate the female mosquitoes will not have eggs so if she, if she will not have eggs there will not be many more mosquitoes to be to begin with right so they will not be able to spread the infection how cool is that right uh, and then uh, we are already using crispr cas9 for cancer as we all know cancer is a very deadly uh, disease and uh, we don't really have many uh, therapeutic or cure for cancer but uh, scientists have uh, used crispr for curing cancer as well what they do they take out t cells so we humans have immune cells t cells b cells which we have learned a lot uh, regarding covid 19 so we take out t cells we again change the t cells to become more powerful and uh, recognize uh, to identify the cancer cells and kill the cancer cell and we put the uh, these t cells which we have edited back to human beings who have cancer and this is how we have cured many different cancers like leukemia and all and third uh, another very cool uh, uh, use of crispr cas9 is in uh, crop development as we all know our populations are increasing and there is an issue with uh, food security you want the crops uh, like plants to be more uh, strong you want your plants to be more nutritious you want your plant to have less diseases because if plants have diseases they will not have fruits right so we want these plants to be strong so what they have done you can uh, you can edit their dna such that now they are stronger and they can resist stress they can resist uh, drought stress you know drought stress also uh, destroy a lot of crops uh, so these kind of things can be done with crispr cas9 and what do we see crispr doing in the future so the, this slide basically tells you what are the um, things we can do with crispr so i'll be going uh, uh, i'll be telling you first about the production of decaf coffee so what happens that many of us uh, the adults like having coffees and coffee has something called caffeine we all know that right caffeine is something that gives this uh, a very um stimulating effect that we don't sleep we feel active that's why we drink coffee but some people cannot uh, tolerate caffeine because caffeine can also make you feel excited anxious so imagine if we can remove caffeine from coffee we can do that with crispr we can uh, we can remove the gene that make caffeine and scientists have done that uh, to make decaf coffees uh, where there is no caffeine it's just coffee and you can enjoy a coffee without caffeine 
and then we have pet breeding so we all love our pets i love my cat and we all love dogs and cats right but sometimes our friends also have uh, these pet friends also have diseases right they get sick and it's very hard disheartening to see that so what if if we know why are they getting sick if their dna has some fault and we know that this fault is causing them to be sick we can edit the dna we can you know uh, change that and uh, many people are trying to do it with pure bred uh, breed uh, dogs where you can change if you can change their uh, dna at very early stage so that they can grow and even the next generation will not have that gene that causes the disease so it is very nice for uh, such studies but uh, I, these studies are not uh, approved yet but these are the ideas what we can do in future with you know um, with crispr cas9 and the uh, next is uh, creation of allergy free foods uh, foods many of us have allergies we can be lactose intolerant so there is this sugar in milk which causes some people to have uh, gut problems when they have milk right so but they would like to have milk because milk is yummy and uh, eggs are yummy so what can we do we can remove those genes that can make these uh, the allergens like lactose and gluten many people have gluten allergies so what can we do if we remove gluten from wheat everybody can have wheat everybody can enjoy their pastas and everybody can have they know we should wrap up a little bit sorry yeah. to interrupt we yeah, have only yeah. two yeah. minutes left yeah sure so we Six can just wrap up yeah and scientists have also made uh, spicy tomatoes because uh, having chilies which are spicy it is difficult to grow chilies so what they are doing they are making the tomato spicy what they are trying to do they are just putting a gene in uh, putting a spicy gene you can imagine in tomatoes and having spicy tomatoes and also you can make your fishes nutritious you can uh, change the dna of the fish and now your fish is having more fat more nutrition for you to enjoy so there are endless opportunities with uh, for by which we can edit dna of many different organisms so that's all for crispr but i think that's only 0.1% what we can do with crispr and i can th- uh, i i would like you to think about uh, other opportunities and you know uses of crispr cas9 think about thank you very much renu it's a new, in endless possibilities definitely not to, n- not able to cover it in one session yes. but you've given them all a food for thought pun intended yes. on what crispr can do uh, yes in terms of changing so thank you changing things around us so thank you very much for joining as a guest scientist